Fellow citizens, yesterday something very tragic happened in our country. Sadly, we lost one of our frontline doctors that has been leading the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. I am talking about 28-year-old Stephen Mogusu. Hired as one of the emergency workers earlier this year, it is really sad for every Kenyan to now realize that Stephen Mogusu had been working for about five months without any pay. He had no insurance and he had no money to take himself to hospital. In fact, it has been reported that he had to appeal for help from his friends in order to be treated at the hospital. Media sources now indicate that that appeal was only able to raise about 40,000 Kenya shillings. Well, sadly, Stephen Mogusu did not make it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, somebody's last words are usually so important. Now, allow me, before I tell you anything else, to read for you a WhatsApp text that Stephen Mogusu sent to his colleagues before he died. So this is him writing to his friends on WhatsApp. I quote, My dear colleagues, let me take this opportunity to admonish you today to get your pay or get out when you can with your health or life intact. I have had the COVID-19 ARDS and I will say not even a full pocket can replenish what has been lost on high oxygen flows, all manner of masks, and begging for one more gasp of fresh air. Usually, I'd write and write, but today I just want to say, save your miserable selves from those institutions. You will live to earn again. I am not in any way inviting arguments or responses to my post. I am too weak to type anymore. Save yourselves. Those were his closing words. So let me first of all ask how our government responded to this. Very quickly, Governor Peter Ojamong comes out and says, how are madaktari, nurses, na clinical officers ambao wanataka kugoma? Hata ukigoma, haita kusaidia? Translated into English, these doctors, nurses, and clinicians who want to go on strike, even if you go on strike, it will not help you. Tukae chini tuonge. In other words, let's sit down and talk. Ambia hawa watu wa health buwana, mvumilie kidogo. Tell these health workers, be a little patient. Mpaka hii BBI ikwishe, kama italeta vitu mzuri, halafu tuende mbele. In other words, let this BBI process pass, and if it brings us something good, then let's proceed. That was the response of Governor of Busia, Peter Ojamong. And notice, he's not just responding to an incident like that of Stephen Mogusu, but to the plight of the entire health workers fraternity. Simply put, don't talk about the health needs and the challenges you have. Be patient. Let's deal with BBI. When BBI is done, you know what? Something good will come out of it. In other words, don't bring health issues here. So that is the response of a governor. Now, here is another response, this time from the former prime minister. You know, when the handshake was being done in 2018, I never knew that we were getting a second president or a co-president. I have not heard from His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta. I have not heard from uh, Deputy President William Ruto. But here is a statement that was issued by former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. I managed to transcribe almost the entire speech. And this is what he says. All I want to do is appeal to our doctors to be more understanding. We are in a crisis at the moment. People are dying. It's not only doctors who are dying. Kenyans are also dying of this COVID. The economy is hurting because of many months of beating. So it is not the time to hold the government at ransom. The doctors themselves take an oath to protect life. 
How then do you justify downing your tools when people are dying? I want our doctors to become more realistic and more understanding. Although they are suffering, it is not only the doctors who are suffering, says he. We have teachers, engineers, lecturers, and so on, he says. This is the time for understanding, negotiating, sitting down, and moving forward. And then he adds, if the government does not have, where does the government get it from? Where does the government get it from? Then he adds, I sympathize with our doctors, but let our doctors also sympathize with ordinary Kenyans who are dying because of lack of medical attention. That was his response. Now, honestly speaking, nobody is saying that other Kenyans are not dying. Nobody is coming out to say that only doctors are dying. So that argument does not hold. Again, the doctors have been talking about their vulnerable positions for so long and the death of Stephen Mogusu is only a microcosmic representation of what is on the ground. Fellow Kenyans, as I speak to you, it is so clear, it is recorded everywhere that we have lost over 30 health workers, 10 of them at least, specialists. These people will leave home in the morning, work late at night, sometimes on call, in order to take care of patients without sufficient gear to protect themselves. So if anyone was understanding, brothers and sisters, it would be the doctors. So I also find it vacuous for anyone to come and say that the doctors have not been understanding or the doctors have not been patient. By the time the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union is coming out and saying, if you don't attend to this, we are going to go on strike, they are doing what reasonable Kenyans can do, and that is to issue a strike warning. They are basically saying, we can't take it anymore. Please attend to this thing. Let us sit down and talk. Nobody wants to talk. The CS doesn't want to talk. The ministry in general doesn't want to talk. The government doesn't want to talk. They are exposed. They are fatigued. They are dying. And somebody comes and says, let us be more understanding. Let us be more patient. Let us prioritize BBI. Now, Raila wants to tell the doctors there is no money. Where does the government get money? And mark you, what the doctors are asking for is already catered for. There have been billions allocated to deal with the pandemic. We've had scandal after scandal. Money is lost. But Raila, truly speaking, is hypocritical because he is the same person driving billions of shillings towards a process that can wait. He is the same one pushing the BBI process, wanting Kenyans to go to a referendum. Already, they have collected signatures around the country, whatever the number that is. They've had money to pump into the BBI process, but they have no money to buy PPEs. They have no money to take care of masks. They have no money to pay for insurance of someone like Stephen Mogusu. Honestly, honestly, Mze, we respect you, but I think that is irresponsible. I don't think you have the moral right to tell Kenyans the government has no money to take care of our vulnerable frontline workers. When you're pumping in billions to defend and work on a process that can wait, a process that is not urgent, you have no moral right. And Honorable Raila, the doctors are not taking the government at ransom. They're simply fighting for their lives. They're simply fighting for manageable rights. Instead of defending a political process, you should be defending a life and death issue, a life and death process. You say Kenyans are dying. You say you understand Kenyans are dying. But doctors are Kenyans too. In fact, they are more endangered than the teachers and the engineers you are quoting. They are dealing with the pandemic head on. They are like soldiers at the front of the battle. You can't say everybody is dying, therefore don't talk about dying. I think that is irresponsible. Well, fellow Kenyans, that is just a small part of what we are dealing with in our country. That is the leadership we have. That is the kind of attention you and I have in the midst of a pandemic. And like I said before, unless this is not a pandemic, 
unless all this is calculated to finish our doctors so that we can all die unless there is something we don't know guess what when these guys get sick they will find foreign treatment they will fly to south africa or to london or to new york and get medical attention you and i will be dying here you and i will be going to our graves including our doctors with nobody caring they don't care so in closing i'll just say a few things first of all our heartfelt condolences to the family of Stephen Mogusu, as well as the families of our medical soldiers that have died during this pandemic. May God comfort you. May God strengthen you. May God walk with you through this dark corridor. But secondly, I will add, Kenya does not belong to only two or three people. Kenya does not belong to a small clique of people that feel more entitled to live, that feel more entitled to spend, that feel more entitled to lead, that feel more entitled to life itself. So none of you should feel intimidated and made to cow down or made to feel like you can't speak as a Kenyan. Well, I have said it before and I say it again. Evil must be resisted and what we are experiencing in Kenya is a bad evil. In Micah chapter 6 verse 8, God reminds us that he has shown all of us what is right. To love justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. We all want justice. We want to see mercy exercised. And we want every Kenyan to remember that we did not bring ourselves here. All of us are going. All of us will die. So don't imagine you will not. Thirdly, I know that many Kenyans have been praying for you as leaders. Many Kenyans have been agonizing. Tears have been shed on this Kenyan soil. People in their prayer rooms at home praying for our country to change, for our government to change, for our leaders to change. But brothers and sisters, there is an end to that. Time comes when prayers must change. Perhaps this is actually that time when we must begin to lift our hands to heaven and cry out for an end to this regime. Perhaps time has come for us to raise our hands to the sky, to kneel by our beds, to kneel in churches, to kneel wherever we can and begin to pray for an end to this kind of regime. And God hears prayer. God answers prayer. People come and go. You were not here a hundred years ago. You will not be here a hundred years to come. You will also go. And perhaps every Christian, this is a good time to start praying for an end to this kind of madness, for God to intervene and maybe even remove these leaders from office. Maybe intervene in ways only he can because there is a limit to oppression and God always stands against oppression. Lastly, again, if we don't learn from history, then we'll pay a costly price. Yes, if we don't learn from what has happened to other people in the past, we will pay very heavily. I am reminded of the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, at a time when the French people were dying, at a time when there was no bread, at a time when there was no food, at a time that the French people were getting sick and no treatment. Marie Antoinette was busy spending like crazy. I am told that one of her pieces of jewelry cost so much, it was enough for one apartment in Paris. You can imagine that. At the time the French people were suffering, Marie was gambling away. Marie was spending a lot of lavish living out there. Even when they were plotting to overthrow them, Marie was still spending. The officers who love her want to evacuate her, want to help her out of France. And so they planned for her to escape in a small chariot, a tiny chariot. But Marie wants this pump. And so, you know, wants these big chariots that would have enough space for me meals and wine even when her end is coming she did not know and sometimes it looks for me exactly that way that as Kenyans are dying as Kenyans are begging for dear life as whatsapp messages like that of Stephen Mogusu is written and sent to colleagues 
There are people whining and dining, looting the coffers, looting the hospitals, looting the schools, looting our homes, looting our taxes, borrowing on our behalf, planning irrelevant projects, planning all these useless things as Kenyans die. Then they'll come and tell us, you know, everybody's dying. I speak like this because I love Kenya. I speak like this on behalf of many who cannot speak. I speak on behalf of many who are dying without any statistic being taken. So if you think we don't see these things, if you think we don't understand, if you think we don't care, if you think you can just make statements in the media and you know get away with them, if you think we are so naive to know anything, I have news for you. Many of us know something is wrong and we are going to do everything to pray you out of power. We're going to do everything in a non-violent manner to cry out to our God to do something about you, to do something about the colors hearts that we see every day, to do something about the looting, to do something about the poor, to do something about the exploitation in this country. And I know God in heaven hears us. God bless Kenya. God bless Africa.